Hi there, and welcome to Sin 7 Core. Today we'll be discussing the Returns Merchandise Authorization, or RMA module. As with any new module, I'd like to start by discussing the settings and the reference books. Here, there's an entire section dedicated to the settings for your RMA. I'll briefly go through these with you. First is a return policy. Here we've got a one-year return policy. We could select that it's only available for certain countries or certain products and the different milestones for those products. Here in this example, we have a milestone for shipping from the customer, inspection of the item, potentially a repair of the item, and then shipping the item back to the customer. There are also a number of attributes associated with this return policy that you can set up below. Next up is the reasons for return. These are reasons that your customer may select to return their item. You can edit this list by removing or adding new reasons for a return. Then there's the re return order settings. This is all relating to your accounting to make sure that you're using the proper accounts for different scenarios and different outcomes. I encourage you to reach out to your accounting professional to make sure that you're selecting the right accounts for the right scenarios. Finally, there's the warranties. In SIN 7 Core, you can have an unlimited number of warranties. Here, we have a one-year warranty that starts on the date of shipment, but you can change that to the invoice date or the sales order date. There's also a handful of other fields that you can fill out related to the warranty for your products. Okay, now that we've got everything set up in the settings, let's actually take a look at setting up the RMA portal. We'll navigate from integrations to our SIN 7 Core RMA portal. Here I have a portal that's already been set up, but it's incredibly easy to do. You activate the portal and you enter your portal name. Once you've activated this portal, you can go to the general portal settings and update any information as you see fit, as well as the appearance. This is the appearance of the portal that your customers will see when they log in. So I encourage you to use your business or company logo as well as your company branding colors to make sure that your customers know they're in the right place when they land on your returns portal. There's also a number of content pages that you can adjust to your business needs. You can also create new pages. Maybe it's your return policy or about your warranties, and you can remove pages as you see fit. And then finally, there's the email templates. When your customer initiates a return, they'll receive an email with the confirmation of the return that they have created with the return item, the total price, and a link to follow up for the status. I encourage you to update the format to match your business needs. And then the RMA completed. Once the RMA has been completed and the resolution has been determined, your customer will receive this email. Now that we have the RMA portal set up, let's take a look and test it out. I can navigate to the portal by using this link here. And I'm already logged in as a customer to use my RMA portal. Here as a customer, I am able to select the sales order, see the order, see the product name, the quantity, as well as the return policy. I can select the quantity to return. In this example, it's only one. And I have to select that I've read and agree to the return policy. Once I start the request, it's going to ask me for my reasons. What is the packaging condition and what are my expectations? The packaging condition here could be original or opened. In this case, let's say it's still in the original packaging. My reason for the return Maybe it mm, arrived too late. And the return type, I don't need a repair or a replacement, but I would like a refund. This final page here is all about the shipping information for this return. And I'm able to confirm my return request. As an end customer, I can come back to this page and see the status of my return. Let's go back into SIN 7 to complete the next steps. 
I can navigate to my returns by going from sales to RMAs. Here I have a list of my returns. I've got my sales order that we were just looking at and the RMA number. Keep in mind, these sales orders could be coming from a various sales channels, whether it's Shopify or Amazon or a sales order that was placed over the phone. All of these are filtering into one returns portal. Here we've got the information about the order and the return. Here's my receipt action. I'm going to inspect and authorize. And it's created a return order for me. For this return order, I'm now going to be able to say that I've received the product from the customer and authorize. A restock and credit note is created on my behalf, but I can also go through the steps here. If there was an inspection or any sort of repairs that were associated with this, I can do so here. There's also the resolution. So we are going to restock the product as it is in perfect condition, and we're going to restock it as the same product. It's important to note that some businesses may have an open boxed product. So if the item was opened by the customer and now you wanna sell it as a open box product, you could do so this way. And here I'm able to resolve the return. Now that my product has been restocked, I can continue to the other related orders, such as the credit note. Here I can see that the customer had already paid for the full price of the item. And we're gonna refund the customer. Fantastic. Now, if I navigate to my portal, I can see that my products have been returned. I will also see the credit note for the return, and I'll receive an email with the status update. I hope this walkthrough of the Returns Merchandise Authorization Portal has been helpful, and if you have any questions, please let us know. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.